Hello, my name is Tiffany C. Wright, and I am the resourceful CEO. And today I'm here to talk to you about your financial statements. It's extremely important for you to track the financial health of your company. And the way to do that is through generating and reviewing your financial statements at least once per month. If you are not doing that, then you need to get to an accountant or get a bookkeeper and do that ASAP. If you're a smaller entity, you can use QuickBooks online. That usually works for companies up to about a million, maybe even two million. After that, you can move to QuickBooks. You know, I'm a big fan of QuickBooks. It's very user-friendly, as you can tell. No, I don't get any money from QuickBooks. <laughs> You need to generate them monthly and review them monthly. So you need to have your bookkeeper generate them and then have an accountant make sure that your bookkeeper did everything correctly. If you're larger, then you have all this in-house. If, if you're smaller, then you can use a part-time bookkeeper to do your books once a month or once a week depending on your size and the amount of revenue you generate but you need to get that done and you need to make sure you review your income statement and your balance sheet i would love for you to also review your cash flow statement but i know that's asking a lot <laughs> so why is it so important to generate and review your financial statements well because they show you the financial health of your business and you need to be able to understand what you're seeing. You need to understand what gross margin means, what gross profit is, what percentages sh should be for your business, how much you're spending percentage wise of your revenue on your overhead or on marketing or on whatever. All of these things you need to know and understand in order for you to be able to use that information to make adjustments in your business. So first you have to review them, but second, you have to know what the heck you're looking at. <laughs> if you need assistance, contact me. Okay, so let's talk about the balance sheet. The balance sheet shows your assets and your liabilities and your equity. Actually, it's called a balance sheet because your assets must equal the combination of your liabilities and your equity. Your equity is what you originally put into the business and what your business retains after it makes distributions and so on from your actual profit. So it's retained earnings plus what you put in there. If you take distributions and keep no money in a company, your equity is gonna be pretty small and I've even seen it be negative. So if you're looking for a bank loan and you have negative equity, hmm, you're probably not going to get it. <laughs> Your assets are also important. What's the quality of those assets? What's the quality of your debt? All of that. And so let's look at ratios. Ratios give you a lot of information about what's going on with your balance sheet. You want a strong debt to equity ratio, which means you want it to be low. Unless you're in a very capital intensive business, then that's a different story. But for those of you who are in service businesses, your equity should be much higher than your debt. But often that's not the case. So if you're looking for bank financing and your debt to equity ratio is high, that's not good. Again, unless you're in a capital intensive industry. You need to look at your working capital ratio, your current ratio, your day's turnover if you have inventory. There's a number of different ratios that you need to look at on your balance sheet depending on your business type. Moving on to the income statement, whereas the balance sheet shows you where your business is at any particular snapshot in time, today, tomorrow, a week from now, the income statement actually shows you what has been happening over a period of time, a month, a quarter, a year. And the best way to really analyze your income statement 
is to look at everything on there as a percentage of net sales. So what is your net profit margin? That is a percentage of net sales. What is your gross margin? You use that as a percentage of net sales. I'll go into that in more detail later and I'll share screen and so on. But I just wanna let you know, look at your percentages and that will help you analyze how well you're doing and if changes need to be made. And so next up is the cash flow statement. It's extremely rare for small businesses to look at their cash flow statement. I mean, it's hard enough to get people to look at their income statement and their balance sheets on a regular basis, but cash flow statements typically go out the door for companies that are less than 50 million in revenue. But what the cash flow statement does is tie your balance sheet to your income statement and it shows you how income flows to your balance sheet and how the purchase of assets or the disposition that's the selling of assets flows through your income statement. And here's the thing I really want you guys to know. It's that when you buy equipment and you finance it, you have to make cash payments, but that doesn't show up on your income statement. And that can be a problem. The other issue with the cash flow statement or not looking at the cash flow statement is that when you have receivables and your receivables are increasing, but your business is staying the same, then that means that your receivables are not being collected as quickly and that causes an issue. Yes. Where's your cash going? Well, it's not coming in because you're not collecting it. Your customers aren't paying in a timely manner. Another thing is you could be paying your suppliers much faster than your customers pay you. So if you're paying your suppliers in 10 days, but your customers pay you in 60, as sometimes happens in construction, then you have a mismatch. You would see this mismatch on your cash flow statement. So let's bring this all together. The income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement are all part of your financial statements. And they tell you something, but you need to know how to understand what they're telling you. If your gross margin is going down, what does that mean? Are you paying too much for equipment? Are you paying, is your direct labor going up? Are you having issues with delivery, customer service issues, those kinds of things? That will show up in your gross margin. What I typically find is that your operating profits are much more of a concern than your overhead for smaller businesses. Smaller businesses typically don't have huge overhead, but they do have a lot of mismanaged direct costs, mismanaged or just unknown. They don't, they don't track it or they're tracking direct labor down in overhead. And that's not so, I mean, that's not where it goes. <laughs> I mean, it is so, but that's not where it goes. Overhead are managers, your top management team, or your accountant, your support folks. But if you can directly associate someone with the service or product that you are delivering, their direct labor, and they need to go into your calculation of gross profit, which then leads to your gross margin. Gross margin is a percentage. It's gross profit divided by your net sales. Net profit margin is a percentage. It is your net profit divided by your net sales. I'm Tiffany C. Wright, the resourceful CEO. If you need assistance with anything to do with your finances and understanding them, you can join one of my programs or you can sign up for a strategic call with me. I'm here to help you any way I can. Thank you.